Welcome back to the channel YouTube. Let me talk to you. So I've seen the hype. I've seen the trailers. I've seen the accolades. Dune part two has been a complete success. Dune is a remarkable achievement in every sense. Holy mother. The movie was really, really good. But Masterpiece, not quite, in my opinion. Some others might think so. I personally don't. Um, for me, there's a few things in the movie that really disengaged my interest a bit, but nothing enough to take away from how good the movie actually is. The movie does so many things right. The plot was well told, well paced, and well acted the characters are hands down some of the best characters that i've seen written that i've seen acted that had so much nuance and depth that i've seen in a very very long time from anything that is being put out in hollywood today austin butler played such a really really good menacing villain in fade ralph hands down some of the best performances I've seen in a long time. The visuals. If you guys know anything about me and about this channel, I am a sucker for visual storytelling. The choice of the shots that the cinematographer used were actually breathtaking. The choice of colors that they use, the difference in color and contrast and the use of certain tones between the Harkonnen and the Femin, they played so well against each other. When you were looking at some of the Harkonnen set pieces, it was black, it was bleak, it was just dark, sometimes in colors. It displayed such emotionless characteristics in the color choice, which was the complete opposite of what we got when we were looking at the feminine on Arrakis. The colors were still dull and dry, but then they had the hint of the blue and Chennai's sash and the eyes of the feminine. That reminded me so much of some of these black and white photos that had a slight hint of color that really drew your eyes to the particular painting or a particular portrait or a particular picture. And for me, that slight change, that slight hint and color change is something that drew me to the screen and kept me engaged, if not the dialogue was but the visually appealing look of some of the shots and hats off to the cinematographer greg frazier he put together some of the best looking scenes that i've seen in a long time it rivals one of the movies in my top five uh, of the generation the colors and the use of rain and the different tones and the different color sets that they use in that film reminded me a lot of some of the things that they were doing here in Dune. But a lot of this stuff just works. And like I said earlier, I am a sucker for visual storytelling. By the end of the film, you didn't know who was the villain and who was the protagonist. Those things are signs of writing that leads a person down a path of nuance that makes you sit back and think, oh, well, should I be rooting for these people? Should I not? And what happens on screen plays out well enough that it kept me engrossed for the most part. There are some scenes that I felt like were a little bit down in the pacing that really took me out of the viewing, but not that much. Um, going back to the performances, my God, Everybody, everybody across the board did such a good job. Batista, Dave Batista, he's definitely stepped up his game uh, a lot in this film compared to some of the other things that he's done in the past. But man, he's definitely on his way to becoming a solid actor, if not already. So good job on him for just displaying that level of intensity and that level of emotion to a high degree. Just solid work across the board. The only thing that I would probably nitpick would be Christopher Walken's performance. Now, granted, 
he didn't have a lot of screen time and when he did just the scenery around him did a lot of the work so if i had to nitpick that was probably one of the pieces of the film that i really didn't enjoy that much but like i said he wasn't on screen a lot the choreography god was 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 solid on so many levels the hand-to-hand -hand combat were fast was fluid and you felt the oomph when people got hit um the guerrilla warfare because essentially that's what the Fimmen were doing a lot of the attacks on the Harkonnen when they were invading Spiceville felt like real guerrilla warfare in a desert it just worked everything about this film worked for the most part just a few bits and pieces of the pacing that threw me off there's some weird time jumps that I noticed through some of the dialogue as to what was happening at a particular time and then two seconds later the story that was being told or the dialogue that was being uh, displayed felt like time had passed and that was one of the things that I felt was a bit jarring if you definitely pay attention to some of the smaller parts of the detail oriented things in film like I do and that among the Christopher Walken performance are the only two things that really kept this from being just what people think would be just a masterpiece. Just a few things, nothing major, nothing to take me away from how good the film actually is. The opening scene really sets the tone for what this movie is going to be. There was absolutely no dialogue in the first few minutes of the film. Everything was told by sound, the score, the visuals, and the amount of intensity and the amount of emotion that the actors had during this scene. Well done on so many levels. This scene showed me the type of storytelling that we're gonna get, the type of acting we're gonna get, the type of emotional weight that came with each character that we were gonna get throughout this film and they deliver it on so many levels. If you know me, if you've seen any of my videos, I talk a lot about character growth and character development and emotional weight. And that was a lot of it in this film. And a lot of people use that term so loosely emotional way, but the gravity of the decisions that they were making that had so many implications throughout the film that we probably won't see pay off until a few movies down the line. So I am here for the ride. Now, me personally, I was slightly skeptical about going to see this second part because the first one, I don't know if it was just the timing. I don't know if it was just me having a lot of things going on in my life that it just didn't resonate with me. So for the introduction of part two, I wasn't very hyped and I wasn't too interested in it, but I still wanted to see how things played out. So I'm glad I didn't listen to that skeptical part of me and go see this i'm glad i did and i thoroughly enjoyed it and i think anybody who wants to change of pace from all the dumb monotonous things that we get in hollywood today you're gonna go see this and you're gonna enjoy it there's a lot of things that this film did right so let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below if you enjoyed this film if you didn't let me know what were some of the high points and some of the low points until next time, guys, my name's Lincoln. This has been an RPG show. Like, comment, sub, and I'm out. Peace.